Hi everybody. In this video, I'm going to be walking you through how to create a trust design for your principles of engineering bridge. And this would be for um, unit two, obviously. And the reason that we might use Fusion 360 is because it's going to help us make sure that we know exactly how to build this thing. And it's going to tell us all the measurements for the cuts that we need to make for our lumber. So this is going to be a really useful tool. And I really have uh, just three things that I want to show you with Fusion 360. Okay. The first one is what if we want to create a bridge with diagonal beams that overlap like what you see here in this gray piece, right? So what I have is holes drilled all the, through all the pieces at proper locations. And I'm going to use a screw or screwdriver and just kind of drill this thing in together from the side, right? That'd be one way that I could connect those diagonal beams. Another way that you may want to take um, would be to, let's see, look at this thing from the top. You'll notice that I can also go through and I can do angle cuts on the beams and I can drill in the screws from the top. And that might be a better way to kind of get a symmetrical bridge that's not going to torque or anything on you. Okay. And so that will be in the next video in the series is how do I create this angle beam with the angle cuts. And then the third video I'm going to create is, okay, now I've created this truss on the left. How do I quickly mirror that to create then the truss on the right? So I can have two trusses with just one easy click. So three videos here. And in this video, we're going to worry about this type of beam. If we want to create an angle beam that has some, you know, has some crossover, has some hangover at the, uh, at the ends. Um, and we're going to screw it together from the side. Okay. So before we get going to that, um, this is helpful information for all three videos. Let me show you where I started. Okay. I simply created a beam at the bottom and you'll notice that I have holes drilled in all of the proper locations. So this is where every joint is going to be located. Okay. Um, it doesn't matter what size the circle is. It can be very minuscule. I made mine quarter of an inch. This is a 60 inch piece of lumber. Okay. We're building big bridges in my class. Okay. But I have holes in the proper locations. That's step one. Then step two is to go and add a separate component. Notice it's its own part up here. It's not part of the same part. This is two separate parts in this assembly. Okay. And it's centered. It's shorter, obviously, but it's centered. That's important. And it's directly above the first beam. Okay. And then I'm just going to go ahead and jump in to this point because I want to show you that it is possible to create quickly and easily these diagonal beams. And what we want to do then is let's go mimic the third beam, the one that we're going to be looking at that goes from here to here. So that's what the rest of this video is going to accomplish. Okay. Very simple to do this. First of all, we're going to create a new sketch. Notice I'm in the assembly, by the way, I'm not going out and creating a new part. I'm in the assembly file and I'm going to go create a sketch and it's going to be on the front surface of my bottom beam. Okay. Now I'm drawing on the front surface of that bottom beam. And this is how I'm going to do then the part. I'm going to use L to draw a line. I'm just going to draw kind of like a you know, four-sided shape here. I want you to notice I'm not careful at all about what that four-sided shape looks like. Okay. Now that I'm done with that, I'm going to um, use the parallel constraint to turn this four-sided shape into these pairs are parallel. So are these pairs. Okay. Now I got a quadrilateral. Okay, so that's good, or parallelogram, excuse me, that would be the proper term. Here's a parallelogram, but now to turn that into a rectangle, I'm going to have to use the perpendicular constraint in one corner to make those 90 degree angles. Okay, now obviously that's not going over the, the whole locations that I wanted to go over, so let's figure that out next. We have a rectangle, now we just need to orient it. Okay, so I'm going to hit escape and get out of my uh, constraint menu. Um, I'm, before I go any further, I'm going to hit P to project the geometry of this circle and the geometry of this circle. Click OK. And now those circles are both for use. We're going to lock into those here in just a second. We're going to lock into them with another line. So L for line. I'm going to go midpoint to midpoint. Okay. I'm going to hit escape to get done with my line tool. I'm going to click on this line in the middle and I'm going to hit X to turn it into a construction line. So it's just there for guidelines. It's not actually part of my real shape in the end. Now the magic, I use coincident constraint and I want this line to go through this circle. I also want this line to go through this circle. And now you'll see 
that if I go and I look closely, so escape to get out of the coincident constraint, now you'll see that that thing is correctly oriented in the direction that I want it to be. And I can extend it and shorten it, but it's going to have to go through these two circles. So now the last thing we have to do, we, we've got the rectangle. We have it in the correct orientation. We just need to size it now, right? So just a couple of dimensions. So for instance, for my particular piece of lumber, what we're using in my class, we're using one and a half inch thick strips of wood. Okay. And just arbitrarily, I was like, how much, you know, if I'm going to screw this thing in, I don't want to screw it in at the very end of the lumber. There's going to have to be some overhang there so that I don't split the lumber. So um, we just kind of arbitrarily decided maybe an inch and a half would be a good amount. I don't know that that is actually the right amount. Maybe we need two inches. Maybe that's actually too much. Maybe we only need one. Okay. But for now, we're just doing an inch and a half. So what I'm doing is I'm clicking on line two. There we go. Let's try this again. I think I clicked in the wrong spot. I'm going to zoom in and show you here real quick what I just did. I'm clicking from dot to line. Come down here. Got an inch and a half. There we go. And I now have the piece of lumber that I want to create. There's the outline. Correctly oriented. It's a rectangle and it's the correct size. I'm going to click stop sketch. I'm going to extrude that shape. There we go. Oh, looks like it didn't. There we go. I've got to get the bottom piece here. There. Now I got all of it. I'm going to drag it out. And in this case, for us, in my particular class, it's 0.75 inches thick, give or take. That's what I'm using for the example. They're actually using dial calipers to measure it for us. But then this is the most important step. Ready? Don't click OK yet. Right now, as a join, what it would be doing is adding material to the bottom beam. This is not the same beam. I don't have a single beam and I've cut like a notch out of it, okay? This isn't a tree branch where it's all part of the same thing. This is a new beam. This is an entirely different component. So I need to change this to say new component. I'm going to click OK, and now you'll see that it shows up in the menu here as its own separate piece. That's the key. Okay, even better is now I can go to the inspect tool and I can click on this and it tells me in order to create this beam, I'm going to need to cut, you know, I'm probably going to round that up. If I'm doing this, you're not going to find 21.446 inches on a ruler when you're going to make a cut. So I'm going to say, you know what, I need a beam that's 21 and a half inches long. I'm ready to go mark that and cut it and it'll fit perfectly. So hopefully this makes sense as a longer video than I was expecting it to be. In the next video, I'll show you how to do those diagonal cuts. So you can watch that if you want to, or you can skip right ahead if you're not going to do that method. And you can go to the third video in the series, which is going to be how do I mirror to create the rest of the bridge, the other side of the bridge. Hopefully this makes sense. If you got any questions, let me know.